Imagine a drug that could improve your mood, energy, sexual function, muscular strength, and red blood cell production. You would probably take that drug, right? Well, fortunately, you don't have to because it occurs naturally in your body, even if you're a female. Yeah, that's right, even if you're a female. I bet you didn't know that. You love it so much when I teach you something that you didn't know. In this video, I'm gonna hit you with all the knowledge about testosterone that you could possibly wish for, and then some. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as I avoid the yap and get straight to the elaboration for you on this video. What is testosterone? Testosterone is a hormone, more specifically, a sex hormone. Hormones help control your bodily functions such as growth, repair, maturation, reproduction, the list goes on. The hormone testosterone is produced in your gonads, aka your sex organs. Testosterone stimulates the development of male characteristics. You might be asking, what does testosterone do? It starts in the womb. At around seven weeks, the SRY, the sex determining region, on the Y chromosome initiates the development of testes in infants. This is where the testosterone is produced. Other reproductive organs during fetal development develop in unison with testosterone. After birth, testosterone levels usually wean off until puberty. So does that mean that the average newborn has more testosterone than a seven-year-old? According to my research, it does. During puberty, testosterone is responsible for hair growth, increase in height, increase in libido, and enlargement of the penis. Shout out testosterone. Into adulthood, testosterone promotes bone and muscle strength, it keeps libido up, and it keeps a sense of well-being. It's very important. As I mentioned in the intro, women have testosterone too. What's that about? Why would women need testosterone if it's called the male hormone? It's actually a very important hormone for women too. It helps in utero development, it helps develop new blood cells, it helps increase bone health and libido. How is testosterone created slash regulated? This one's a little bit more difficult, but I'm gonna to try to simplify it for you. Your hypothalamus and your pituitary gland, which are in your brain, communicate with your gonads to discuss which hormones are needed in which balances, all of these affecting testosterone. If you have too much testosterone, that's called hypergonadism. Your gonads are too hyper, aka they're doing too much on the testosterone front. Symptoms of this are increased sex drive, early balding, increased muscle mass, and increased acne. Most of those aren't that bad in my opinion. If you have too little testosterone, which is more common, that's called hypogonadism. For that one, I've included the symptom list right here. You don't wanna have low testosterone. What are normal testosterone levels for men? 300 to 1,000 nanograms per deciliter. Interesting units, I know. Younger men, the average is around 600 nanograms per deciliter, as testosterone usually peaks in your late teens slash early 20s. About 40% of men older than 45 fall under the normal range of testosterone. How would you know that you're under the normal range of testosterone? Usually through a blood test, but the blood tests aren't as accurate as you think. There's a lot of factors that vary the accuracy of these tests. The most common in younger men is diurnal variation, which is a fluctuation between your testosterone in the morning and the night. 8 a.m. is when your testosterone peaks. As the average male ages, low testosterone becomes more of a concern. So what should you do? That brings us to testosterone replacement therapy. But before we get into TRT, we're gonna do a quick segment called Boost or Bust. I'm gonna bring up an idea, concept, food, whatever it may be, and I'll tell you if it boosts or busts your testosterone. Obesity, massive bust. Lifting weights, massive boost. Garlic and onion, boost. Candy, aka mostly sugar, bust. Radiation from your phone, bust. Protein, boost. Drinking alcohol, bust. Flaxseed, bust. Trans fats, bust. Magnesium, boost. Pomegranate, boost. Bad sleep, bust. Good sleep, boost. Nuts, bust apparently. Stress, bust. Caffeine, in smaller portions, boost. Too much caffeine, bust. Sun exposure, 
massive boost. Get outside. I think a tan fellow like me he has low T. I, it's honestly possible. I don't know. Sometimes there's factors you can't control. I might have low T. But I doubt it. I, I highly doubt it, honestly. Like, I severely doubt it, bro. You know, I, I actually highly doubt it. So, and then the two ambiguous concepts on this episode of Booster Bust are smoking and stroking. I did thorough research on both of these. You can do it yourself. There's so much data saying that smoking promotes your testosterone and that it also tanks your testosterone. Same thing with stroking. You know what I mean by stroking. Do what makes you happy, but don't do it too much. So finally getting into testosterone replacement therapy. I've got a lot on this. I did some extensive research, so hopefully I can offer you some good information. To be deemed worthy of TRT, you need to have two blood tests that show you are below the average levels for your age range. The reason for this is because these blood tests aren't always super accurate. As I mentioned before, you wanna take your testosterone test early in the day because diurnal variation, but the older you get, the less diurnal variation you have. So if you're a 60 year old, there's a good chance that your tea in the morning is the same as your tea in the afternoon. And then another element of eligibility for testosterone replacement therapy is being symptomatic. Some people are at 350 and they feel terrific. That's the lower end of the range, but they feel great. And then you have people who have a 650 level and they drop to 550 and they feel the effects like that. What are the adverse effects of getting on TRT? Well, here they are. You might say that's a bit concerning, but it's actually not. What I just showed you is the TRT symptoms of people who already have enough testosterone and decide to get on test in addition to what they have. It sort of relates to the idea of hypergonadism as we discussed earlier. If you're in your 20s and your 30s, there's actually no reason for you to get on T unless you are significantly below the average level for your age range. If you are someone who's below the average levels of testosterone, then you should get on TRT, in my opinion. I plan to do it when I'm older. There's hardly any adverse effects. It's just about getting it to a spot where it's normal, supplementing what your body can't create for you. You also might have heard if you start TRT, it's hard to get off of it. That's mostly true for older men as their supplementation prevents the production naturally in their body. If you're younger, it's easier to get off of it because your body adjusts quicker. One more fact, a lot of people associate testosterone with higher sex drive, which is true. So they say, if I'm having erectile dysfunction, maybe I'll get on testosterone and that will help me. This is sometimes true, but there's a ton of different causes of erectile dysfunction. If you're having erectile dysfunction, don't watch Enzo Elaborates any longer. Get on the phone with your urologist, get an appointment scheduled, and we'll get that sorted out for you real quick. Hopefully I answered some of your questions about testosterone. I enjoyed researching for this video. It applies to me. I'm a gym bro. I want high testosterone. Shout out Eli Sherishovich, who gave me the idea for this video. What a testosterone machine that guy is himself. Comment down below what age you think I'll have to get on testosterone. I bet you my levels are probably like 3 million right now. So, But above all, like and subscribe. Comment what you want to see next, and thanks for watching. I appreciate every single one of you who takes the time out of your day to watch one of my videos. You help me make it go. Boom!